Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about learning something. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you think that software engineers strive to learn something new every week? Nope. I am pretty sure they don't. Now, it depends on the software developer, of course. If you ask the most motivated, idealistic software developers, the so-called rock stars, for sure. And incidentally, that is one of the probably biggest contributors as to why they are rock star developers. Uh, but the average software developer is uh, a lazy bum who usually learns enough coding to get by. And then they have other interests. Now I can say that for a fact because, uh, well, when you work for a little while you'll start to notice that there are certain archetypes of software developers. Some people who, how to put this, they, f they fit this certain pattern of mentality or like how they behave and so forth. You have different types, everything from, I've probably mentioned that a few times, you have like scared juniors or juniors want to impress you or you have like philosopher mid-levels who think that they, you know, they think that they can solve all the world's problems with certain patterns, they're very strongly opinionated about some things and then you have of course the lazy mid-levels who are like, they just don't give a fuck about anything and like they're always trying to do the bare minimum as much as possible and then of course you have like your seniors like bitter seniors who are like they don't really care about anything about uh, anyone outside of themselves that they're off or you have like the you know this is my stack I've always done it this way and where I'm gonna do it this way forever because for some reason I don't understand that there are many ways of doing something but this is obviously the best one and since I have seniority I'm gonna pull rank on you you motherfucker uh, then you have the incompetent seniors who have like 20 something years and like they talk a big game but they can't actually produce shit like there are so many types of these and you kind of learn them all like after a few years if you keep you know if you if you pay attention um, and then you, uh, because at the end of the day, guys, people are different. I'm pretty sure that that's not going to come like a surprise to you or anything like that. But the, the average software developer is just another person. And it really comes down to what type of individual do you have. And I find that the developers who try to learn something new every week, or like some people ask me, do you try to learn one new programming language per year and stuff like that? And if you ask me personally, I don't think in terms of, like, in a time frame, if that makes sense. I don't think in t terms of, oh, I'm going to learn something. I have a goal with what I'm doing. And that is, incidentally, in my opinion, at the very least, the same thing that will get anybody to a master level skill of something. I've told many developers before, like, would-be developers, th when they ask me, how should I, you know how should I start my projects or should I learn tutorials, should I take this course, how do I get good at programming and so forth and so forth. And I always tell them the same thing. You have to start with a need. Because the need is the essence of everything. It's the essence of engineering. Everything comes from, and that's incidentally why science and like technology and all this stuff comes from, the essence of it all is that you want to do something that you either don't know how to do or you can't do with your current situation. So now you have to figure out how you're going to bridge that thing. It's the same thing that we, you know, when our ancestors realized that, hey, you know what, if I get a really sharp rock, I can actually open coconuts or I can, you know, make fire if I, you know, rub sticks together, stuff like that. You, you, you create solutions to your problems, but it all starts with that need. And so being need driven is the thing that is very, very important. And in order for you to have a need, you have to want things and have passion and actually have a drive. And that's why I tell people that that personal drive to want to achieve something or do something or be curious, that is the main factor that determines how far you're going to go in life just in general, I would say, because it's the thing that gets you out of bed and gets you to the thing and do the, will make you go and do the thing that most people are too lazy to not to do because they don't have a desire to do anything. So 
most and the, I mean the average person usually sits around and just kind of goes with the flow and tries to minimize work as much as humanly possible which is of course very common for most people uh, but when it comes to passion and things like that this is the thing that gets you you know you can be lazy and all I mean look at me I'm lazy as fuck but when it comes to programming I'm quite driven and the same thing can be said for everybody you know you have people who are very deep into fitness or very deep into music etc etc you have to have something that drives you and so when uh, when you have that drive it really comes down to figuring out what will be the next interesting thing for you to do so when I for example there was a once upon a time guys where I did not know how to use the internet I had no idea I'd never used a computer my dad bought me no he didn't buy it I, I inherited a second-hand computer uh, from one of he was they were up there grading their systems at his job and he I got a used computer and well then we had I think I mean I'm not as old as you know really really back in the days I had a 56k modem or something like that I think in those good old days and I still remember my first interaction with the internet was jumping into a chat with some dude saying hey he said hey back and then he left the conversation that was my first view of the internet basically I don't re I can't remember I wasn't that you know, that old but uh, I did it like I, I I learned how to use the internet and then I figured out okay how do you search for things etc so that because I had that need to learn more same thing goes with programming where you know if you want to figure out what the next thing for you to learn is it really comes down to what do you want to do some people ask a lot of people actually ask me what is the best programming language to learn? And I go, what do you want to make? If you want to be a games developer, there might be certain choices you want to make. If you want to do web, that's one thing. Embedded systems, maybe that's the third thing, you know, machine learning, etc., etc. So I really en encourage people to think in terms of what is the next thing for you? What do you want to learn? If you ask me personally, I have things that I have limits in. So I have a personal goal that gives me very organic learning pretty much every single week. And that is that I'm uh, trying to achieve a master level understanding of a lot of different concepts because I have this personal passion where I say that I like to call it I want to try to become the universal programmer. Now, this is just a fictive person. Of course, it's never gonna. I'm never gonna be able to do it because basically that would be a person who knew everything about everything in certain terms of software development and digital products and so forth. And I mean, as you can imagine, like when you, well, even if you were to somehow learn all the things there is to know about a computer and all the ways we use computers, then you know what's the next thing? Well, then it's like robotics and like automation and so forth. But that passion and drive to learn as much as I can about all these different things or these different components that make up a digital solution to whatever we're building right means that I have a hefty amount of stuff that I you know I can just pick it's like a smorgasbord of options whenever I want to want and as long as my body is you know rest well rested and taken care of and I yeah, then I have something to learn every week, but that's not something that is strictly necessary for every single software developer. I is a software developer. I have friends, for example, who reached out the other day, well, not the other day, but the other a while back, uh, and they wanted to talk about starting up a book club because they wanted to learn more about how databases or work under the hood, like what algorithms are they using and how do they do their storage and stuff like that. And so there's so many type and I mean that was just you know you read something on a cert I think the goal was to read one book every month or every other month or something like that and so the, the I really push it back to you to figure this out because most developers don't have that sort of drive but it's not necessary to have that drive either to be a successful software developer you just have to in my opinion have a desire to learn at the very least enough so that you can do the job so what I want you to take away from this is that no the average software engineer is a lazy bum and that's why I tell people that you don't have to worry that you're not gonna be able to master software development and like it's gonna be the super super difficult thing it's gonna be difficult in the beginning but once you hit around the five-year mark uh, you will find that you are probably going to be 
if you have quality years, about at the same sort of level that some of the people who have been doing this for 20 years are, because it takes around five years-ish, maybe a little bit more, to get to the base level, that where people consider you like a solid mid-level at the very least. And once you're there, you will find that most most software developers they're just here to they they're just in for like they're interested sort of into working with software, but they're not passionate uh, in re for real. They're not actually driven and like hungry and all that stuff. They're just there to keep cash in and get a paycheck, which is you know there's no shame in that, but it's uh, that's the way of the world, and it's just that you get sold this idea that all software developers are like these super passionate people because the people that you see on the internet are the prime candidates for that sort of viewpoint and that's why I tell people you have to think about you know guys I hate to break it to you but you know all those beautiful people who go to rock concerts and like all that good stuff that you see on social media that are th this is snippets from a gigantic gigantic span of time that's not something that happens all the time it's just that you get this sensation that oh this is normal because there's so many people yeah but there's millions and millions and millions of people of course someone taking one picture from one concert or something like that and then you're, f you're subscribing to like a uh, hundred different people well you're gonna start getting the sensation that oh there's a lot of that st stuff going on but usually actually if you really think about it there's not the, I mean, it's not the norm. Most people are not posting when they're sitting on the bus or, you know, making breakfast and stuff like that. And that's the normal stuff. And for most people, software development is just a job. For the truly driven and passionate people who have a desire to learn or a need or something they want to accomplish, it's a different story. And that's what I say to you. If you want to learn and, like, push yourself and try to be the best software developer that you can be, don't focus so much on learning something every week. Find a goal and move towards it. Have a great day.